Hello and welcome to Sunday's edition of Wardy's Waffle. Rhonda and I have had a great week in um, in Yorkshire, fan- sorry, not Yorkshire, in Wales. A uh, fantastic week there. We're going to be going back again because we found the ideal cottage, the ideal location with the dogs and uh, plenty of people around to, to meet up with and lots of things to see and do. You'll see I've got the black glass pullers behind me here and we're just going through this um, a first time, sorry, a second time, just this little area up this side because there's a little bit uh, more of, of come back and we're going next door into the field uh, next door that spring barley that we had our direct drilling demo last year and you can see there is some wild oats in it and there is some brome and this will be the first field of the spring crops that we're starting to, to go around now and then we're into the black grass full black grass update costs on how we've controlled black grass over the last eight or nine years and managed to have uh, eight or nine years of black grass free harvest anyway let's crack on here we go see you at the end so how we do it with the black grass is that I organise the gangs um, uh, and they come through Waldmarsh, so our buying group, and everything's invoiced to me. And then we have maps that, um, different farm maps you can see for each block of land. You can see here I've got different maps. I've got a plastic folder here with, with a pen in it, and I've also got worksheets as well. And so I rely on the, uh, the, the chap in charge of the gang um, or, or the female. This year it's been a guy in charge of the gang to actually help me with the paperwork here. So it's important, obviously, because I need to invoice um, the respective contract farms for their share in it. So when they have uh, finished the field, we actually put in, you can see here, if I just hold that up, you can see there, we put in the date they've been in it and also the number of hours. So that is the number of hours. So if there's five people in it and they've been say five hours in that field, then altogether that's 25 hours they've been in that field in total. So you can see that field up there um, just above Heath Farm is 22 hours, 50 minutes. So I then um, put that into Gatekeeper, into the field records. And then when I print off the monthly um, uh, uh, inputs for each field and then an invoice at the end of every month, obviously this hand roguing then will go into the cost. Um, we're paying £15.83 an hour for the hand rogers at the minute, which is, yes, it's quite expensive, but we have cut down on our herbicides by 30%. So in, actually, in actual fact, it's really cost effective because we know we're getting them with this. It's no question of actually only doing half a job. When you hand pull it properly, you actually get to get all of them. And you've just seen a few minutes ago, we actually do fields twice if we know we've got uh, quite a few in an area and they might spring back up or they might tread a few in. So we do it twice to make sure. So that's how we do it. And then we rely on, uh, these are the names of the people that have done it. So they fill in this, this worksheet. And then when I get the invoice from, um, from Waldmarsh at the end of every month, then obviously I check this and I actually do check every week because I get a, an email every week from the Labour gang uh, from the Labour source and they come and they email me just to make sure that we've got all the whole weeks right so I've got the names of the person and then I know the hours they've worked as well from these sheets and we cross check it so I've got maps for every single block of land you can see here we've got this one so the 8th of July this is where they are at the minute this is they're just you can just see them here behind me just through there and so they're just finishing off this this headlands again and so block of so every field you can see here i've got maps for every field all the times in and we pay for the whole lot um for a start and then invoice the contract farms um separately I've had lots of questions on all the clips because we do a lot of hand roguing and I've put some facts and figures up uh, over the last few weeks. But I thought the best way to show what we're doing is to actually get some uh, slides out of one of my presentations that I do to farmer groups about black grass control and our strategy. And incidentally, if any of you want to, uh, me to come and talk to any farmer discussion groups or show this presentation, this is only a few slides out of it. It's a lot more detail than what I'm going to show you. Then uh, please let me know. Our strategy here for the farm is the first thing we do is we look at putting the whole farm into a traffic light cropping system. So that means that our, our uh, we all sort them into three black grass categories. Our most severe uh, fields for black grass will go into a red category and that is normally on the heavy land. We then have our manageable levels will go into an amber category and these are predominantly light land and uh, some of our medium soils where we haven't got too much black grass where it can be pulled, it can be dealt with uh, in between cropping as well. And then the our, um, green ones are where we have got no black grass whatsoever and this is predominantly on our, on our light sandy soils. So once we've done that, we then look at the cropping uh, on the blocks of land. Now, 
The one thing I will say is that if you've got a lot of bad black grass, I really do honestly think you cannot keep growing winter cereals in bad black grass fields. You've got to stop growing winter cereals and put it into a spring cropping system. So we've been on this policy now of nine years when we started to look at our black grass strategy. And we will go, we're on a four year rotation around the farm and we are simple on our red fields. We will, won't do anything else but spring barley continuously. And drill it later into the spring if you like, but don't have cover crops on it and we will actually uh, remove the black grass by spraying twice before Christmas. We'll solo it very, very early in September with our Simba, um, uh, with the Simba solo. Uh, we used to do it with the quad track, which this clip will show you now. So we solo it very early in the autumn to enable us to get two flushes killed with glyphosate before Christmas. And then just before we grill, drill the, plot, the crop, before we plant spring barley, glyphosate again to make sure we take out anything uh, that, that's there. So that's it, continuous spring barley. Then on our medium soils, these are the amber ones where we're growing sugar beet. We've got wheat, uh, we then follow that with wheat or spring barley. Depends if we've managed to control the black grass properly in sugar beet, it will be wheat. If we haven't, it will be spring barley. Then into oats or beans, and obviously this is if we haven't used neonics in the sugar beet, we'll put beans in possibly, or if we have used neonics, we'll put oats. And then we're using wheat and spring barley again, depends on whether there's any level of black grass in the oats or the beans. Then the last field here um, is the sandy soils where we've got sugar beet again, followed by spring barley, oats and wheat. And that's a fairly fixed rotation in there as well. So this is our example of our traffic light cropping. Looking at the changes where we've done it over the last few years, when we started this black grass policy, you can see 2012 stroke 13 here, we had um, 49, 50% of the farm into winter wheat, 35 into oil seed rape. So autumn sown crops, a huge area, sugar beet 9%, spring barley only 4%, 23 hectares there. No spring wheat, no spring oats, no spring beans and flower margins and stewardship. So that's, that's where we were. Then in the middle years, when we really, really were targeting it heavily in 2017-18, you can see here, we reduced the winter wheat acreage down from 49% down to 21%. We have reduced the all seed rape acreage as well, down from 34 uh, to, to, uh, uh, to 20. That's mainly though because of flea beetle, we were be it was beginning to get on top of us there. Sugar beet remained the same, but you can see the extra slack here from the winter wheat has gone here into spring barley and spring wheat. So from 4% in 12 and 13 years to up to, up to what's that, 46% in 2017-18. The stewardships remain the same. Then when you're looking now in this last year, because we've now got boss of the black grass, we've gone back up the winter wheat acreage to 50%. We have dropped all seed rape altogether because of flea beetle. We are hopefully coming back with it, but I was looking at doing it this year, but then with the um, crops being removed because of the um, stem weevil and the uh, um, flea beetle, we haven't done. With the sugar beet remains around the same percentage. Spring barley, you can see, has dropped back to 7%. We've no spring wheat. We've increased or we've brought in um, spring oats and spring beans and the flower margins increased because we've gone into uh, uh, in, into a different countryside stewardship scheme and up that to 10%. So you can see straight away here, when you look at the area where we've gone from, where we were, and now we've gone back. And I think this just highlights as well the importance of spring cropping in this system. And again here, we've gone into oats and beans. Right, just uh, for those of you not sure what black grass is, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. This is a big biro. That is one black grass uh, head. One, it could contain over a thousand seeds, which if you let it seed goes into obviously next year. We then have, have one plant can produce approximately 20 tillers. Look at that. That's from one seed the previous year. We then got 100 ears per square metre will reduce winter wheat yields by a tonne a hectare. And that is fact that's been uh, proven by a lot of agri trials. Now, that is a, not a very good picture, I'll admit, but that is black grass infested wheat. That is far more than 100 ears per square metre. That is about 500 ears per square metre. If that was me, I would spray that. I wouldn't let that seed because that is causing you a massive, massive problem. This is where we started in 2013. This is the level of black grass we had. Typical example, that's all black grass there. That's it, close up. That is how much we had. And this is on, this actually is the field. Those of you who came to our direct drilling day, this is the, this is where we had that. So then those of you who have crops looking like this, this is winter wheat. 
All these finer plants are black grass. And I just think it's not sustainable and serious change is needed. You can't grow winter wheat with this amount of black grass in it and rely on chemistry to try and kill that because you'll only kill probably 30% of that. And this is the biggest problem when you've got black grass growing with wheat and why you must remove it. And I just think, why do a lot of farmers accept crops looking like this? This was one of our fields in 2013. You couldn't hardly tell it was winter wheat. That whole lot was sprayed off before it was seeded. We had 190 acres sprayed off in 2013, not one penny of return uh, from the crops. Uh, and that was where we started to not letting the black grass seed. So when you start to look at it, this again was our crops, the amount of black grass in our crops. This same field now looks like that. And you can get from that to that by changing what you're doing. It's as simple as that. Now, one of our biggest control measures is spraying off areas and not letting it seed. I think that is the biggest, is not letting it seed. And this area here shows that how a roundup patches off in the wheat and then will hand pull anything around the outside of that. Another control measure, you've seen that our traffic light cropping with spring barley. This is what it looks like. You can see spring barley is the best crop bar none for in a black grass situation because it is very, very competitive. Then we are hand roguing, as you can see. You know, a lot of my videos have seen us with a team hand roguing, and I'm going to put some costs up in a minute. Hugely, hugely important. Simple things here. We've got four black grass ears here, and there's two back there. Don't leave those, pull them. They must be pulled. Little ears like that, or little infestation like that, must be pulled because they will all drop. If they've a thousand seeds in there, you've got 6,000 plants there next year in those two areas. This is the type of uh, heap that we'll have. This is my last German Shepherd, Tara. And obviously she was a big dog. You can see the height of her, how big this heap of black grass is. And that, we would hand pull that and take that off the field. And that is the amount of black grass that we would pull. This is what I'm on about, about um, not letting it seed. This was in year one when we did it. I sprayed this off. This was, this was um, in the following wheat crop. And I stopped spraying here. There's a few black grass plants dotted about here. This was the thickest part here. And I thought, oh, what's here won't matter. I'll, I won't bother with that. And that is the line where I stopped. This is the following year in the following rape crop and just shows you how little black grass there is there from spraying off the previous year compared to this where there was only a few years. So now we will always spray off patches. Spring wheat is also potentially a good crop but only on amber zone fields, not red zone fields, because it can open up. When the tillers drop off and the crop starts to ripen, it opens up and lets black grass through. Spring beans are not good for red and amber zone fields. If you have black grass, do not grow spring beans because they're slow to get going in the spring. They'll let the black grass get growing with them and you'll have gaps in it like that, which causes black grass to germinate like that. Germinate like that. And that is a result here you can see all the yellow is all black grass in a bad crop of spring beans, and that is an absolute disaster. Control measures as well with us. You can see here, you might think, what's wrong with that? Well, baling straw, we don't put any, any trails out to bale the straw um, uh, because of balers coming in and bringing black grass in. And this is a simple thing that they, they'll bring it in and no matter how many times they say they're going to blow it down and they'll, I know contracts will have a leaf blower on the baler. You cannot get all the nooks and crannies with a baler, with a leaf blower to get the black grass out. So we don't have, um, we haven't baled any straw apart from three or four years ago when forage aid was active and we had, um, uh, we knew there was going to be a shortage of straw. So I did bale some uh, fields up on the heath on the light land, not on the heavy land. Um, and luckily that year we didn't suffer any, any black grass problems. So then looking at strategy and costs, really good one this when you start to look at it. If you were to rely on, on black grass control from a can and think you're going to farm your way out of it by spraying everything, this is a typical program, Belt and Braces program. This, these costs include application, by the way. And this is when glyphosate was £150 to 20 litres, say, when it was last year. You can see winter wheat, 22. So this is the cost. So pre-emergence of Luxemo and Stomp at £80, including application. Then you go Avidex granules straight after drilling at another £50 a hectare. Of course, you're now starting to get your black grass germinating with your wheat. You're starting to see it like I saw a picture a few minutes ago. That's another £40 a hectare because just as the wheat's coming through, you do it liberate and defy, £40 a hectare. 
We then, the following spring, we then look at, um, you've got a lot of black grass growing amongst the wheat, so then you go along with another chemical, Pacifica Plus, at 60 pound a hectare to, to control it. Hand pulling, um, nothing, because you don't know what hand pulling is. You'd probably have to Google it to really like to understand what it is, because you've never done any in your life. So of course, nothing there. Percent control, I've put question mark, because where would you be? 20%, 40%, 60%? You wouldn't be anywhere near 98% is where you need to be to stand still to stop the black grass from uh, actually going um, in, the, uh, in the crop and, and actually the black grass uh, population getting, getting worse. Here is where we are. This Remember, this is 2022. We put two applications of glyphosate, glyphosate on at two and a half litres a hectare. This is 46 pounds. Uh, this is, remember, 150 pounds uh, for 20 litres. We've got a, a simple but liberator hurricane defy pre-emergence at 52 pounds a hectare. Hand roguing last year, hand pulling in 2022, it actually cost us more than it has done for a while because we were actually pulling late germinating wild oats and we are starting to get a bit more brome coming in. So when we go through the fields hand pulling, we're doing black grass, brome and oats as well. So this cost came up, but we're still 172 pounds a hectare against 253 a hectare, but we are not combining any black grass. I've put 99% there because I don't believe we get everyone, it's nearly impossible, so I'm putting 99%, but at least our seed bank is actually dropping. So looking at costs in 2020, this is the last time we grew spring wheat, our herbicide cost in 2020 uh, was 58 pounds a hectare for winter wheat. Our roguing cost that year was only 28 pounds a hectare. So we had total grass weed control for 86 pound a hectare. Spring wheat, we were 30 pound a hectare for herbicides. Roging was 47 and the total cost there was 77. And spring barley that year, herbicides were 33, hand roging was 35, total cost 68. This just highlights how good spring barley is and how much better it is than spring wheat because we actually spent more on hand roguing here than we did on spring barley. And I've just put this up 2020 because this is the last year we had spring wheat, but interesting on the costs. So 2023, where are we? Well, winter wheat, we haven't quite finished, but I've put some figures up to show you. Our herbicide costs this year are roughly 85 pounds a hectare. Our roguing range, the cheapest field we've done at the minute is £21 a hectare and the most expensive is £124 a hectare. That is the range. So you can see massive, massive cost. But I think we're going to be somewhere in the region of between, I would have said, 60, 60 to £80 a hectare probably to, to hand rogue, maybe, maybe £85 a hectare, somewhere in that range. But I'll do another one of these in, in uh, two or three weeks time when we've done all the farm, when we've got the spring crops done and everything else. But that's the range of hand roguing. So that's it for this week's update. Hope you've enjoyed the look into black grass and how we deal with it. Please come back with any questions. I am going to have a more of a roundup of our whole black grass cost and strategy when we've finished all the spring crops. We're just about to start the spring crops on, on Monday. Uh, so, uh, But we are just, remember, not just pulling black grass. We're doing brome and also wild oats as well. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Please click like and share and uh, we'll see you midweek.